Hi, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to one of our water and chemical additives tutorials. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to be talking about equipment that's used on the effluent side of the water cycle. So I'm going to start off, as I've done in the past, by just mentioning the three different types of water that we have in the process. First of all, we have influent. That's water that comes in from off-site. We usually have to pay to extract it or bring it in, and we need to clean it up very usually. Then there is process water. That's the water that's carrying the fibre and making the sheet. And then finally, we have effluent. This is the water that we no longer want and we're going to discharge off-site. And it's the effluent side that I want to talk about in this tutorial. Now, what effluent treatment involves is, first of all, separating the solids from the liquids. Then you dispose of the solids. Then you make sure that the liquid has carried sufficient BOD and then you can finally discharge it. So the way in which we separate the solid from the liquid is usually by a flotation technique or some type of filtration technique. And here's three uh, quite oldish original filtration techniques. But before we talk too much about this, I'll just explain a little bit about the relevance of particle size and then we'll come back to this. So here we have two groups of particles and the only difference is the particle size. If you notice that this agglomerate made of these seven particles, if you look in between there's quite a, a large gap, a relatively large gap. So that means that water will flow easily through there. And so it's easy to dewater. In this smaller particle, if you look at the gaps now, the gaps are much smaller, which means it's harder for the water to get through and therefore harder for the water to escape and for dewatering to occur. And it's because at the end of the process, We've got rid of all the big bits and we're left with the small bits and even smaller bits. Therefore, it's going to be quite difficult to get rid of the water. So this was the original so-called um, gravity dewatering. And it was basically just like a standard Fordrinia. You have a wire here. You squirt the suspension onto the wire as it as it goes through water falls through the wire here you have a little press and a suction roll what we would call a cooch it was a paper machine to squeeze some water out there you've got your mat of solids there'll be a large portion of fiber there you might reuse it or it might go to uh, to landfill or very possibly spread on the farmer's fields and the clear filtrate that's come through, we can collect and put back in the process. But not a lot of the filtrate will go through and this sheet coming off here will be very, very wet. So to try and improve matters, they came up with this new device. Again, you put the suspension on, it travels along this top wire, filtrate drops through which you can collect and reuse, but then it falls through here. It carries on along here. And here you've got these two rolls that are pressing. And here you've got a wire coming in. So you've now got it pressing between two wires to get more dewatering. So this one, that was a belt filter. And this is a belt pressure filter. And the third evolution was a twin wire press, almost like a twin wire paper machine. So again, you deposit the suspension on the top of the top wire. 
it dewaters by gravity coming round here. At this point here, it's joined by the second wire and you've got these rolls each side of the two wires squeezing all the water out as best you can. And then we've got one roll so it comes up there, squares between those two rolls, squares between these two rolls, squares between those two rolls, squares between those two rolls. Final set of rolls and then your filter map comes off there. So as you see it's quite difficult to dewater and therefore you need these fairly intricate techniques to squeeze all that water out. Another device was the gravity table. Again very much like um, a fluid renewer in a way. We have this horizontal wire mesh traveling that way. We deposit our suspension there. Now they realize that if you've got a fairly thick suspension like that, if you've got a thick map like that, here's the wire. The water from this part of the mat will drain through, but the water from this part of the mat can't get through. So what they do is they have these so-called coupons here. And what they will do is they will lift up that mat and turn it over to reveal a fresh surface. It's almost like a, a farmer ploughing a field in reverse. When a farmer ploughs a field, the field stays still and his plough goes across the field and turns the soil over. In this case, the ploughs are stationary and the field is moving, but still the top gets turned over. So the idea of these coupons is to turn over that farming mat to reveal fresh surfaces to the wire so that you can get more dewatering. <clears throat> and then we have the screw press, the modern method of dewatering. Now the screw press relies on squeezing the, uh, the water out of the stock and it does it in two ways. First of all, you've got this casing which is perforated. And here, this shaft, if you look, the shaft gets wider and wider and therefore the space between the casing and the shaft gets smaller and smaller. So that's how the squeezing occurs. We bring the suspension in at this end, the thread moves it forward and as it goes forward, the space between the thread and the housing gets smaller and smaller and therefore the stock gets scores more and more and the water falls out through the perforation. For those of you that are keen eyes, you will notice that here, the pitch of the thread or the distance between one thread and another is quite large there. But as you move this way, if you see, it's getting smaller. So not just are we squeezing the uh, mat that way, we're also squeezing it that way. And then we extrude, extrude something out of here, or usually little pellets, and they can often be sold where they can be um, dried and, and burned on uh, barbecues or garden heaters, something like that. So that's the um, screw press. I mentioned in a previous video about the crofter and how in my day we used to inject air from underneath. The modern way, one of the problems with that is the fact that it's not very efficient. When you inject compressed air through the system, some bubbles will never hit a fibre at all, they'll just go straight to the top of the vessel. So that money is wasted. Other bubbles will hit a fibre or a filler particle and just bounce off it. So that one is wasted. It's only the bubbles that attach themselves to the fibre so that the fibres can clump together are the useful bubbles. So dissolved air flotation or DAF as everybody calls it is the ideal way of targeting the bubbles so that they go exactly where you want them to go. Now, if you've ever had a, a bottle of sparkling water or sparkling pop and you've undone the top, 
when you undo the top, look at the bottle, look at inside the bottle and look at all the bubbles that start to form. When you release the pressure, all the gas that was in solution comes out of solution and forms a bubble or lots of bubbles. Now, the bubbles never start in the middle of the liquid. They always start on the surface of the glass somewhere, maybe at the bottom or maybe on the sides, but they will always form on a surface because they need a sort of a gathering point, what we call a nucleation point, somewhere where they all gather together. And this is the secret of dissolved air flotation. What we do is we bring in here our uh, liquid effluent with all the tiny particles in. The particles are so small that they won't really settle very well. And what we do then, we bring in air under pressure, something like 10 bar pressure. Such, so, so you bring in a portion of this stock saturated with 10 bar of air pressure. That comes up here, you then release it into the bulk of the stock. And that's like shaking up a pot bottle and then releasing the top. So suddenly we go from 10 bar pressure to one bar pressure. All the gas that's in solution comes out of solution and it wants to form on something. So it forms on a surface. And what is the plenty surface of? Fibers. So all the bubbles actually form on the surface of the fibers and then they carry the fiber to the top and then you get the clumps of fiber coming together. So DAF, dissolved air flotation, is the perfect way of targeting that air exactly where you want it to go on the fibers. So there's no missing fibers altogether. There's no bouncing off fibers. They all gather. So. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned something from it. Please feel free to comment and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye for now.